What's up, sports designers? Mike with Sports Templates here, and I'm back today to show you this awesome new football helmet template. Today, we're going to learn how to navigate this template by recreating this cat's design. And along the way, I'm going to show you all the features you get with this package. And before I do, do me a little favor, head down below, hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps us out. And down in the description, you'll also find a link to the asset library used in this video. So you can follow along if you want to recreate and follow along with us, make the same design just to learn how to navigate. That would be, uh, that would be great. Okay, let's take a look at what comes with this package. So with this template, you get a Photoshop PSD file in 6K resolution. So this is this thing is, is huge um, as far as the resolution goes. It's gotta be the most realistic looking helmet template I've ever seen. And this is actually a first for sports templates using an outdoor scene with realistic sunlight and glare even. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about that. But usually it's, you know, you see a studio lighting set up, an indoor scene. Uh, this is meant to look like it's really outside on a football field and it just looks amazing. Uh, and to make it even better, it's really easy to use. So even if you've never used Photoshop, this thing is set up in a way that's super easy and we're gonna show you everything you need to know in this video. So everything you get, you get the, the Photoshop file and that's really all you need for this. You do get a link, like I said, to the asset library that you see up here so that you can have the same colors and the same logos and everything that we're using for this video. And there's a lot of stuff that comes with this. I wanna first start, I'm gonna go back to the, the base design and I'm gonna zoom in. So I'm gonna hit control and the plus key. I'm gonna hold control and hit the plus key on my keyboard. Uh, or if you're on a Mac, it's uh, command and then the plus key. So just zooming in so that you can get a look at the textures on this thing. I can go even further if you want. So, I mean, we've got a face mask and it's got, you know, it's got some scratches and distress on it. You've got the helmet and you can see sort of the sparkle texture of the paint, right? You got some damage and scratches on the hardware, the texture here on the strap clips and the screws. Got some scratches on and glare and everything happening on the visor. You see more scratches as we move along the face mask. Look at the shadows and the lighting in there. Look at that glare. That is just awesome, right? All the way down to the chin strap. I'm gonna zoom out just a little. I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hold control and hit the minus key just to zoom out a little bit. And to move around, I'm holding the space bar to turn my cursor into this little hand and then you can just click and drag. And look at this, now you get down to the, to the grass. You can see every individual little blade of grass. You've got the foreground is, is blurred, right? To give it that realistic effect. All the parts of the helmet have super realistic texture, you can see. I'm gonna hit control zero to zoom all the way back out. You can see the stadium in the background with the blur effect. So those, those blur effects really make the helmet stand out, right? They make it pop as the primary focus uh, that you wanna be looking at. So, wow, just awesome. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to recreate that design or any other design that you might wanna do. So first and foremost, everything over here in the layers panel is you can turn it on and off. So like if you don't want a visor, you can just turn the visor off, right? We'll, we'll turn it back on for now. And you can change backgrounds if you want to, like if you don't want this background, you can turn it off and you know, add something different. Um, kind of has the grass factored in there. So I would suggest, you know, keeping the grass and then if you want to put something else in the background, you can, but we've got the stadium scene there for you. And let's start by going inside this helmet folder. So inside the helmet folder, you'll find some other subfolders. One is the effects, and that's what makes this thing look realistic. So just to show you, if we turn that off, it just looks like flat shapes, right? The visor has its own effects. So um, you'll see, you know, different, different areas um, that control different parts of it. But just the helmet itself, you want to make sure you keep that turned on inside the editable parts folder, we'll find all the different things that you can change on this helmet. So let's just work our way up from the bottom. We're gonna change the shell color. Now, if we change it 
right now, we're not going to really see much. We see it change on the inside, but we don't see anything out here. And that's because this shell design smart object is turned on. And this has basically a wrap around the helmet. And so we're seeing, we're seeing that. I'm going to turn it off for now. We are going to come back to this. Just want to turn it off so you can see the color of the helmet change, right? So we can change any color we want. And before I do any more, let me just show you some of the other options. You also get a couple other finishes with this helmet. So let's say you want to do like a matte finish. This is a gloss. The base is a gloss. So let's say you want to do a matte finish. So not so shiny. Just turn this on, turn off the shell design. And there you have a more of a matte finish. And there's a color control in there too. So there's a white matte. There's a black, right? So whatever you want to do, you have the option to do that with a with the matte finish if you want to. And then same thing with chrome. If you want to do a chrome, you can turn that on. And now you've got a much more glossy, reflective surface. You can see the, you know, the light towers and everything like that sort of reflecting in the chrome, different colors, anything you want to do. Let's see what happens if we do like a bright green right so anything any color you want to do it just looks awesome oh that's a nice aqua looks awesome in that chrome that chrome finish but we're going to stick to the base gloss finish kind of the sparkle effect so we've got it set to our base orange now let's go back through and look at all the different things we can change in here so just so you can kind of see things stand out, I'll do some more extreme colors for a second. So this one is labeled the shock absorbers and it's just different little uh, safety parts within the helmet, right? We'll just keep those at the, kind of that dark gray, maybe, maybe a little bit lighter. The padding inside the helmet, okay? So if we make it orange and you can see it shows through like the cutouts in the helmet here, we make it white, we make it black. I think we'll just do like a, a medium gray, maybe a, a darker gray. This would have a lot of shadows on it, right? Cause it's inside the helmet. So no, I don't think the bright white really makes a lot of sense. We've got the back bumper here. Make that any color we want. I like to keep those white. We've got the chin strap fasteners. Let's make those black. Here's another chin strap fastener for the top one. Make that black and I'm gonna lighten that one up just a little bit. There we go. So you can always play with the colors to make it look exactly how you want. The chin strap itself, let's make that black too. And you can see it has that like nice orange glare reflection on it from the sun and the color of the helmet and everything. That's just awesome. Uh, chin strap itself, let's make that black. Maybe a little bit lighter down in here. Just wanna see some more of that glare on it. And this here is the front logo area. So this is the base color and then the design is actually up here. So we'll, we'll make, we'll keep the base color white. And really quickly, let's, since we're kind of working our way up, let's place our first design. So I'm gonna turn that on. And, and so this is called a smart object. And so what this is, is it allows us to place a design and it'll automatically put it where we want it on the helmet, uh, but it allows us to place it on a flat surface like this. So it's easier to sort of um, place things. So I'm gonna just turn off the grid. We can, we can keep it on for now. I'm gonna take this cat's logo and drop it in here. And let's turn the one above it off. And let's just kind of position this like right in the middle, right? Somewhere in the middle. We're gonna turn off the grid because we don't want the grid to show. And now I'm gonna hit Control or Command S to save. Or if you want, you can just close and say, and it'll ask you if you wanna save. Uh, but I like to check the positioning first, right? So I'm gonna keep that open. And if we zoom in, we can see, right, it's behind the face mask, but we can see it's placed. And I'm happy with that. So I'll go ahead and close that. Now let's keep working our way up. 
the bolts here, let's make those like a bright white. And then the face mask clips, let's make those black. And then the face mask itself, let's make that black too. And look at all that light hitting it. That's just so cool. And maybe we'll just not make it pure black, but bring it down just a little bit. We can see even more light in these areas here. That looks awesome. And so the last thing we have to do, um, if we wanted to, we could put a design here along, along this strap. And actually, why don't we do it? I'll turn off the stripes and we'll just drop cats in here again. And I'm gonna put this, just put it over here. Turn off the grid. I'm gonna hit Control or Command S to save and then see where we came out. So it's there, but it's it's like right to the edge of everything. So I'm just gonna hold the Alt key and drag inward and it's gonna bring it in from all sides towards the center. Hit Control or Command S again. And there we go. Now we've got cats. And let's just say you weren't happy with the placement, you want it close to the end. Just come in here, drag it to the left. If you start dragging to the left and you hold down the Shift key, it will only let you go left and right. It won't let you move up or down. That's to help, that's to help you, you know, if you just want to move horizontally, or if you hold Shift and click and you start moving vertically, it's not going to move horizontally on you. It's a nice way to kind of control your movements. So let's move it way over there. Hit Control or Command S. There we go. Now it's close to the end. And you know, maybe you don't like that. Just want to center it a little bit more in sort of this space. That's pretty good. So we'll leave that there. And now let's place our logo. So if you remember, we have this shell design smart object. If we turn that on, the whole helmet turns blue. The reason for that is inside the smart object, we have the grid turned on and we also have the stripes turned on. So if you wanted to do stripes down the middle of your helmet, you could come in here, you could change those stripes. We have a preset grid, but you could put anything you want here. So if you want to put a pattern, change the stripe layout and you know, turn some of them off, just have one big stripe, right? Let's do one big black stripe real quick and we'll turn off the grid. We'll hit Control or Command S. It's gonna save everything. And now we've got a black stripe down the middle of our helmet. We'll just leave it there. Now let's place our logo. So we've got this logo here as a placeholder. Now football helmets, all kinds of different logos, right? Different shapes and sizes and placements and everything. So um, we have kind of a target here of where you would probably wanna put your logo. Uh, but depending on the design, you may need to just move it around a bit. So I'm gonna drag our logo out here and I'll just start with it like right there. And I'm gonna turn off the sample logo. I'm gonna hit Control or Command S to save. And it'll take just a minute and then come back out here and we can see where our logo is placed, right? And at this angle, the helmet can't really see the back. So, you know, the, hel the, the logo kind of wraps around the back there um, is what you would want to imagine. And you just got to think about placement, right? And and be um, aware of these cutouts and where you want the, the logo to appear. So I, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I think it's almost, okay. So in our original, it's a little bit lower. So let's move it down. We'll just drag it down this way. Hit Control or Command S and kind of see where we came out with that. So that's, that's pretty low, right? That's almost the same. It's just the original one is, is moved a little bit further toward the back, right? And again, this is completely up to you and kind of where you might want to put it. Uh, but I just want to try to approximate the one we had and show you how to sort of play with your placement if you need to. So that's pretty good, right? That's that's really close to where we were before. I think the original one is just a tad bit higher and a little bit further to the back. So we'll just, one more time, we'll just adjust a little, maybe like that. And if you find something that you like, right? You're, you're really happy with the placement and you're gonna, you're gonna place, you know, most of your logos in kind of that same area. 
you can adjust these grid lines or you can even add more. So these are placed here and it can help you to align things to them. Um, if you want to move them, you can just grab them, click on them and, and they'll move. Um, but let's say you want to just leave them there, but maybe add some new ones, right? Um, I like to align things to the center of what I'm doing. Or if you wanted to like build a frame, you could do that. So if you don't have your rulers on, you can just press the R key on your keyboard and it'll, oh, I, I must have a different shortcut on right now. Um, if you go to view and rulers, it's control R, sorry. Uh, control R will turn them on. And if you go up into your ruler with the cursor, if you click and you just drag, it'll drag a new grid line down and they kind of snap into position. So it'll snap to the edge of the canvas, right? Or it'll snap to like the middle of the canvas. But what I want to do is you could do one of two things. You could snap it here to the center, right? So you know where to center your design. Or you could even do like the top, the bottom, and each edge and kind of build a frame around it so that you know you want your logo to be within that box. And then if there are others you don't want anymore, right? So maybe you don't want these ones. You just click on each one, like you hover your cursor over until it turns into that symbol there, click it, and then hit the delete key, right? And so now you have this box grid where you know you want your logo to be there. If that's the placement you prefer, you could do this any way you want to, right? So we'll hit control or command S and that'll save our grid layout. And now we've got our completed design. So zoom in just a bit again, control or command and the plus key on your keyboard. Then I'm gonna hold the space to drag over and you can see the logo on the helmet, super realistic lighting, right? Every little curve of the helmet you can see. You can see the kind of sparkly texture of everything got some scratches here on the top from guy slamming his head into somebody look at that sunlight and speaking of sunlight the other thing i want to show you if you turn this glare on you see right there right there watch for it you see just a spot of sun glare that turns on optional right so if you don't want it you can turn it off you can turn it back on and then like always if you want it We've got the dynamic lighting and the dynamic lighting allows you to really control the lighting of the the helmet so um, if you want to change it at all turn it off turn it on you double click into the dynamic lighting smart object click on the hue saturation go to properties if you don't have properties go up here to window turn on properties and then if you just drag this around it will move the light. So you can bring the light in from any angle. Right now it's coming from the front and that makes sense because in the scene with the background, that's where the sun is. But maybe you use a different background and you want light to come from somewhere else. So let's just do something really extreme and bring light up from down here. Hit Control or Command S. And now you can see that bottom edge is all lit up, right? So this is, this is a more advanced technique if you want to uh, do something to kind of custom fit the lighting to your particular scene. You can play with this as much as you want to play with all the different options, right? You can change the saturation. Maybe you just want a little bit of lighting, change the lightness to get, you know, a brighter or a darker effect. Control or command S to save, and then you can come out here and you can see your results. You turn it off, you turn it on. So that just right there is just a nice extra pop of light from the front. Look at how much more detail you can see when you do that. That's awesome. Look inside the helmet here. When we turn it on, you can see so much more. So cool. Um, and actually, another thing to show you, the visor, right? We talked about how you could turn it off if you don't want it. There's other things within the visor you can change, right? You can change the glare, right? The reflections and shadows, you probably want to leave all this on. Uh, but just if you want to kind of tweak things, you can adjust those. You can change the hue of the visor. So change it to a bright orange, black, white, right? Anything you want to do, go back to orange. 
And then in here in this color options folder, we've got some pre-built colors and gradients for you. So there's an overlay color. You can kind of change the tint of things, right? And then there's these built-in gradients. So if you want to do some super colorful things, you can do that, or you could change the gradients. So if you just double click, you can then come in here and you can move the gradients around to change the position of things, right? So maybe you want more green on that side, right? Maybe you want to add a color, add some red, right? Anything you want to do. This is fully customizable. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm just blown away by this. This thing's amazing. I cannot wait to see what you guys make with it. So I really hope this was fun and informative for you. Um, you know, if you're new to Photoshop, hopefully this helped you to get started. If you've been using Photoshop for a long time, this will be really easy for you. And um, you're going to be able to make really awesome stuff. We, we are just really excited to see what everybody makes with this. So please head over to sportstemplates.net, pick this up and make sure to tag us on social media. We want to see what you do. Leave us some comments below. Let us know what you think. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks so much for watching, guys.